Good morning. Welcome to our online worship service for Sunday, February 7th, 2021. I am Gary Broadston again, a lay leader at Union Park United Methodist Church here in Des Moines, Iowa. We are glad that uh, you chose to worship with us today. <clears throat> Great is our Lord <clears throat> and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. From Psalm 147, verse 5. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. God comes into a world filled with uncertainties and darkness. God seeks out the voids of belief and conviction. God embraces the wounded and broken. God knocks down the walls of division and strife. God is the candle shining in the darkness of our days. God is the light of our lives. God is the one who makes all things new. Praise be to God now and forevermore. The announcements for this morning are due to the current status of Pastor Caesar David's visa. We are postponing his month's Holy Communion. Please join us in a prayer for quick approval on his R1. Until that time, Pastor Caesar will be out of the office. If you have an emergency that requires a minister, you may contact Reverend Doug Amos at 515-202-6845. And a little reminder that next Sunday is Valentine's Day. A week from Wednesday, February the 17th, is Ash Wednesday. A special service will be on both Facebook and YouTube. We will also hold a special Ash Wednesday drive through Once again, Puxatani Phil predicted six more weeks of winter.
pastoral prayer for today, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that we may worship and praise you. Help us to be receptive as you reach out to us to guide and teach us your wishes. May we be an example to the world as we follow the example of Jesus and learn to serve as Jesus demonstrated. Today we thank you for the people having birthdays. Kara Williams, Jessica Shernman, Warren Larson, Brent Long. May they experience your love in their lives and may they praise you for the blessings they have received. We ask for continuing blessings and joys for them this year. We also want to lift up to, to you those uh, who are not well and ask for your hand to touch their lives to provide comfort and healing. Lynn Ball, Bob Irvin, Cindy Brown, Linda Shriver, Jan Birkenbein, Elaine and Don Burke, Jaylene and Marvin Barton, David Bindner, Robert Zust, Gladys Kohler, Lyman Michael, Nancy Burgett, Joe Clo, Becky Goodrich, Pat Gilliatt, Harlan and Karen Christensen, Aaron and Kim Gladfelder, and Alan Johnson. We pray for our church leaders as we continue to evaluate when we might resume in-person worship services and meetings. We pray that the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services will quickly review and renew the visa for Pastor Caesar David so that he may continue to serve in leading our church. We pray for this uncertain time that we may have comfort and reassurance that you are always with us. These we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The Old Testament reading for this morning is from Psalm 147, and it is verses 1 through 11 and verse 20c. And this is praise for God's care for Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. For he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. God lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with the clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of a runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. Praise the Lord. The gospel reading this morning is from the book of Mark, and it's chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. Thus ends the gospel reading for this morning.
Today we are looking at uh, Mark for the basis for our sermon. Today, answering God's call to serve. We learned in the last two weeks that we might be asked by Jesus to follow me and that uh, we are to fight evil in the world, including those that we meet, ourselves, and the world in general. God will not give up on us and may keep trying to get us to serve him as we share our life and our belief with others. At the very heart of following Jesus and being a disciple is a life of service. But what does that life of service include? And who are we being called to serve? God will lead us to serve as he wishes if we are receptive to receiving the call to serve. Follow me. As Jesus said, we're to follow him, and that is a call to respond every time that we say yes to Jesus. When we examine the life of Jesus in the scriptures, we get a picture of the life that included his teaching, healing, and service. When we make our commitment to serve, we must look at the example of Christ and the many ways he served those around him daily, including his teaching and healing. We must be able to see the need around us in the world so we can serve those needs as led by God. That means that uh, we do not have a set list of ways to serve, but we need to be open to God leading us to see where our service is needed. Let me give you an example for me in, in my life. I have been actively serving the church. I attend by serving on various committees, teaching computer skills, and leading a Sunday school class. I was trained to be a certified lay speaker years ago, and that taught me the skills needed to conduct a worship service and prepare a sermon. I eventually saw that the training was valuable, but I did not feel led to continue that certification since it was difficult for me to have the time required to maintain that certification by taking those required training classes while still working full time. I have continued to serve this congregation as a lay leader and on occasion giving sermon messages or giving input on what to include in the order of service. With the problem that Pastor Caesar David is facing uh, with getting his extension of the visa approved, I have been called upon to serve in his absence by helping with the order of service, giving the message, and performing other duties that he would do on Sunday morning. That is how I have been called to serve God at this time. Christ may challenge us to be willing to surrender and allow the Spirit to work within us that we might be vessels of grace and invitation in the world around us. We are reminded that it isn't easy to serve and that it requires a readjustment of our whole life. As we live our lives as followers of Christ, we may be led to others in our church family or the community that need our service in some way, or perhaps there are other examples where we need to serve in any number of ways. We may be called to reach out to those we meet to share our faith or within the church setting. We have some things that we can do as well. We can be an usher. 
We can assist with communion, read scripture, make announcements, sing, play music, assist in worship in other ways. We make our commitment to serve because we have been healed in so many ways, because we have been claimed and loved and accepted in ways that even surprise us. We commit to serve in the name of the one who loves, just like we find by looking at the examples in Scripture of Christ serving others. Simon's mother-in-law in this gospel today, this gospel lesson from Mark, uh, provides a strong witness. As soon as she got to her feet, her first action was to serve. As soon as she came to herself, she didn't think of herself. She set herself aside in order to serve others. Well, let's look at this story a little closer. Simon invites the disciples and Jesus to come with him home. And as they enter the house, something reminds Simon about his mother-in-law's condition. There is no asking here, no plea of faith. Mark simply says they told Jesus about the condition of Simon's mother-in-law. And the next thing that you know, Jesus is on his way down the hallway into the mother-in-law's room. And there he takes her by the hand and lifts her up. She was healed and ready to serve others out of gratitude for the healing. Think about that for a moment. Jesus previously had that confrontation in the synagogue with the healing, but there was uh, nothing to this point in Mark's gospel suggesting Jesus had such power. What did they think as Jesus uh, finds the fevered woman and pulls her to her feet? Need we be reminded about all the taboos of that culture and time? contact between men and women, laws of hospitality between guest and host, being in the presence of the sick, and many more taboos. Yet, there he goes, without so much as a word, all it takes for Jesus to heal was to say, your sins are forgiven, or your faith has made you well, as we experience in, in other healing acts. In this case, he just takes her hand and lifted her to her feet, and the fever left her. Just imagine that all eyes were on what had just happened, as those present experienced the compassion, love, and healing power of Jesus at that moment. Mark describes the only proper response to a miracle such as this, and she began to serve them. Her response to this healing was service. Her gratitude was not in her words, but in action. The story does not tell specifically what she did or what was included in that service. She showed her gratitude by serving all those present and not just the one who had healed her. When we serve others, what do we expect in return for our service? Sometimes we may expect something in return for our service. We, instead of expecting something, need to be grateful to see that those we serve have been blessed in their life from our service and that they desire to respond in some appropriate way. All our work, all our service is in response to what has already been given. We do not look for anything 
in return, except to feel that we have been able to serve in a time of need. What happens next in the story in Mark? Well, Mark 1, 33 tells us, and the whole city was gathered around the door. As word of the miracle spread, many came to also be healed and to hear his, this teacher. Jesus must have worked long into the night trying to heal all those that came. He must have been extremely tired, but early in the morning, he slipped away to pray and get a break to catch his breath and connect with the source of his strength. His absence caused concern, so they started to search for Jesus. Jesus needed to take time away because he needed to recharge and be strengthened and to keep his priorities in order even in the many demands placed on him to continue. The disciples told Jesus when they found him that everyone, the crowd, the hungry, the needy, the demanding crowd of people, they were searching for him. In Mark 1, 38 and 39, it reads that he answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. Jesus was focused on his mission, even when it seemed a bit harsh to just leave one location and go on to another place when those that are left behind are still searching and wanting to learn the things he was teaching or to still be healed. It was the responsibility of those who remained to serve others by continuing the ministry after Jesus moved on. It was his service to cover more ground in that very limited time that he had. Jesus wanted to continue to reach more people to allow them to hear his message of love and healing. As we carry the name of Jesus before us, we must, like Jesus, carry our message out to those who haven't yet heard our story and the wonderful story of God's love, forgiveness, and compassion for everyone. We are making disciples even as we are being made disciples. That is our service. Just like Simon's mother-in-law, we serve them, all of them, any of them. We serve others when we are answering God's call to serve. Let us pray. Father, we ask that you help us serve where you lead us. Help us to be receptive to your call to serve and see the need for service. Embolden us to serve those that are in need of the service we can give by offering words of healing, hope, love, and speaking and acting with authority that you empower us with. Help us learn from Christ's example and be encouraged that we may go into the world to do your work, to confidently spread your word of care for all, love for all, compassion for all, and your healing power that can be available through us in our service to others. Amen.
let us join in saying together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now for the benediction. Pour out your spirit upon us that we may be servants of truth, peace, and hope, and love in the world. We are sent into the world that is in need of healing. We are given all that we need to be messengers of peace in the world for God. Go now into the world as God is with you and rejoice in the presence of God in your life. Take the news of peace and hope to all that you meet. Amen. <laughs>